a quite good way about 140. It's two and three at the moment. Yeah, I've got, yeah, I don't need to get some aspirin or something. I need something more variety. Okay. It's a nice and calm, it looks good. It's quite good. Yeah. Mate, don't film this. Don't film this. Next year, next year, deadlift. A million quid in the deadlift. Million quid, then it'll go viral. I'll have your logo on my chest. The offer's there. Uh, we're, we're willing to haggle. Yeah. <laughs> Half a million? Half a million. <laughs> I'll take nine fifty. <laughs> For a million, you get you get sex. <laughs> that works. Watch the steady of your breathing, then. Not waste any energy. Keep all the energy of this last lift. He can do this because he believes he can. Ladies and gentlemen, here we go! It's time for the half-ton deadlift attempt. The best. And one. the first man making his way to the podium is the man who has held the world record. Did I believe Eddie could pull 500 kilos that night? No, not at all, no, I didn't think he could do it, no. Uh, it'd be easy for me to say I knew he'd do it now, but uh, no, no, if I'm honest, that was 50-50. Eddie the Beast! Oh! Knew Eddie was wearing a very tight deadlifting suit to keep his core in. And in the last week, he'd even put on another 10 kilos virtually in body weight. Eddie definitely had the faith in himself or he wouldn't have been able to do it. Humans don't have any limits. All your limits on your mind. But I know to lift these 500 kilograms is, is so dangerous. After this, you can be really injured. 2016 was truly special. 11,500 people, packed out arena. I'm here to prove a lot of people wrong today. People say it isn't possible. You know, people say going to the moon wasn't possible. Running a mile under four minutes wasn't possible. But I'm here today to prove 500 kilo deadlift is possible.
all the family time that I sacrifice. <laughs> Let's have a round of applause to Eddie's wife. What a special moment for the whole family. What an incredible moment for the strength sport world. If it wasn't for this woman, it wouldn't happen, honestly. She does everything for me. You know, she, she is my rock. I love you, baby. Eddie had probably one of the biggest surges of adrenaline, which is what was causing all the shaking. And then he had a huge surge of endorphins to deal with the pain. And that's why he was bleeding from his nose, his mouth, his ears, probably his bottom. And he was loving it. He was absolutely wild. I've seen the tapes from out the back and Eddie is not exaggerating. His heart rate was still over 200 as they were trying to pry the deadlift suit off of him and away from his legs about 20 minutes later. He looked pretty scared. And his, his, his blood pressure was pretty much matching. Hey, don't tell me. Don't tell me. After Eddie pulled 465, I thought he was through. He came back for the 500 and it was really a remarkable lift. As far as I'm concerned, that was the magic number for me. You know, I wanted to hit that magic 500 kilo. I want to be the first man to lift half a ton. My take, one of the greatest strength feats ever done. If someone were to come along and break that record, I don't know, maybe some fire would ignite in me and maybe I'd want to go a bit heavier, but you know, what's capable? I, I genuinely think I could pull 550 kilos, you know, around the 1200 pound mark. Basically, I trained my mind to a point where I was able to picture myself on a motorway in a car accident with my kids trapped under a car, lifting a car off of my kids. And it wasn't until I locked out that deadlift, I, it was almost as if I just woke up, just, and I woke up at the top of the lift, give a little nod to everybody, and I don't remember doing the lift. I just remember waking up at the top and then waking up at the bottom, you know, a big puddle of blood, the aftermath of the 500 kilo was very severe. Um, I was convulsing after the lift, you know, I got my suit off, I was fine. And then all the blood pressure rushed back to my head or whatever. I was in and out of consciousness, sort of twitching away. And uh, I remember, I remember, I don't know, I think it was Darren or one of, the, one of the promoters just whispered in my ear after the lift, Ed, just get up and make it look easy. So, you know, I get up and uh, br brush my shoulders off, do my little speech to camera to the crowd and I get backstage and boom, on my face, out cold, paramedics on me. Uh, blood pressure's unreadable, so over the 200s. My heart rate was unreadable, I was over the 200s. And I'll never forget, you know, when the paramedics are putting all the wires on you and doing the tests, doing the, doing the ECG to see if your heart's okay. And when you say, oh, uh, it must be a malfunction, we'll have to do it again. You think, yeah, first time, okay. Second time, shit. Third time, shit. I'm really in trouble. Um, it took me a good half an hour to sort of die down and calm down and, I, and believe it or not I actually lost the vision in the middle of my eyes and I think it's something to do with the amount of pressure you know I had a big black hole in the middle of my eyes um, it really hurt me you know physically mentally it drained me it killed me I'll never forget the next day it was my son's birthday party and uh, there's loads of people there and I can't remember the names you know I'm struggling to Talk to my brothers, my mum, dad, my wife, my wife even, you know, I'm thinking, what's his name, what's, what, what's her name, what did he just say? Um, it blew my mind up basically, you know, severe brain bleeds, um, very lucky to be alive, but, you know, I get asked the question, if I could go back and do it all again, yeah. <laughs>